Now that we're past the NHL trade deadline for 2020, we're going to jump into the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs and make some predictions. Today, I'm going to tell you who I think will make the playoffs in each conference, and we're going to go through round by round and give you my Stanley Cup prediction. We'll get into that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we had a very exciting NHL trade deadline. We're now in the home stretch of the season. Many teams have 20 games or fewer remaining in their NHL schedules, and we have a lot of big battles going on for the final playoff spots. Now, there's a few spots that are pretty much locked down, but there's still lots that are up for grabs. And even the teams that are locked into the playoffs are pretty much a guaranteed a spot or, you know, could be jockeying for position here. So let's jump in. We're going to go through each division. I'll tell you who the top threes are going to be, the two wild cards in each conference. And then we're going to look at the playoffs runs one through three, all the way to the Stanley Cup finals. And I'll give you my prediction on who is going to win the 2020 Stanley Cup. So of course, as always, I want to know what your thoughts are as, as well. So make sure you follow along, leave some comments down below on who you think is going to make the playoffs and how how you think things are going to go once the playoffs get underway now let's kick things off here with the atlantic division in the eastern conference i do have first place going to the boston bruins now the bruins are in first place as we speak right now uh, they've been in first place for a big chunk of the season obviously the tampa bay lightning have been really hot and on their tails uh, trying to uh, close the gap and they've done a pretty good job with that but i think the bruins are just too strong too good and are going to end up finishing in first place here there's you know too much of a gap here with not enough time left and of course factoring in all these decisions as well with these predictions i did look at how many games each team has left i looked at schedules what you know home and away that type of thing and kind of factored everything into the mix here and i just think the bruins are going to hang on and finish in first place in the atlantic division next up in the second spot we have the tampa bay lightning now earlier in the year about halfway point now, earlier this season, it was looking like the Tampa Bay Lightning might be in trouble. They started slow, as something we haven't seen in a while. I mean, the Lightning typically, have, like last year, came out like gangbusters uh, and were really leading the way for a big chunk of the year, but found themselves kind of uninspired and not really playing for much down the stretch and then faltered big time in the playoffs. This is a very different story this year. They started the opposite, started slow, and are finishing strong, and hopefully they're getting hot at the right time. Uh, they made some pretty strong deadline acquisitions with guys like Blake Coleman and Berkeley Gaudreau uh, add some extra depth. They signed Zach Bogosian for some extra depth and help on the blue line, which is never a bad idea. Teams go through a lot of uh, defenders and uh, making a deep run to the Stanley Cup. So I really like this Tampa Bay Lightning team. They've been playing really uh, strong hockey. They do have a few minor injuries that they're dealing with here right now. But overall, I see them finishing here in second place. Now, third place is still a little bit more up for grabs. If you look at some deadline deals, uh, there's more teams that are still think that they feel like they're in it can still grab that spot. Uh, but really, in my opinion, it's down to two teams, and that's the Maple Leafs and the Panthers. But ultimately, I'm picking Toronto to finish in third place here. I know that neither team was overly active at the deadline. Uh, the Leafs didn't really do much. They added a little bit of blue line depth. They traded Michael Hutchison. Uh, obviously, they had made their bigger move earlier by getting Jack Campbell and Kyle Clifford a little bit ahead of the deadline. Uh, in the Panthers' case, they uh, traded Vincent Trocheck, which is not going to make them better. Uh, the players they got back are okay. Uh, some of it's more for future. Um, but really, overall, I just don't see the Panthers being a better, stronger team today than they were before the deadline. It seems like management was given the initiative by uh, ownership to cut some payroll, uh, which is surprising after everything they went through last offseason and all the spending they did. So I guess we'll see, but I just don't have a lot of faith in the Panthers down the stretch. And I think the Leafs, even though they've been inconsistent as well, will grab on to that number three spot, which is going to be essential here, uh, I think, for these teams to be guaranteed a spot in the playoffs, considering how strong the Metro division is. Now, speaking of the Metro, let's change gears here and take a look at who I have finishing in the top three in that division and then we'll look at the wild card spots here in the eastern conference first place in the metropolitan division i have the washington capitals stanley cup champions from two years ago they're a big strong team that are built for playoff runs here uh, this team added a little bit more at the end deadline by getting Ilya kovalchuk obviously good friends with alex ovechkin uh, adds a little bit more skill even though things didn't work out in la he played really well in montreal and just gives them that much more of an extra weapon uh, based on their previous run to the cup two seasons ago they you're even a stronger, nastier, more physical team now than they were then. And, and obviously, like I said, that style of hockey really seems to come out and play 
a bigger role come playoff time, and that team is built for it. So I think they're going to do really well down the stretch here. They have a small lead right now for first place in the Metro. They have a couple teams on their tails, but ultimately I think Ovechkin and company are going to hang on and grab another division title. Now finishing in second place with a strong finish is going to be the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now the Penguins have battled through so much adversity this year. It seems like it doesn't matter who they called up or who they put in that lineup when they had all these players out at different times. They just seem to continue to be successful and continue to win. Uh, they've made some really good uh, acquisitions here at the deadline that I was uh, quite happy with that will really help their team. Uh, clearly, they added another great veteran in Patrick Marlowe, uh, who's chasing a Stanley Cup. Uh, so that could be a good story to, to follow there. You've also got the additions that they made from the uh, Sabres and Connor Sherry, who they're very familiar with, and Evan Rodriguez. Of course, they traded uh, Cahoon over to the Sabres to make that deal happen. Uh, and of course, they'd already picked up Jason Zucker ahead of time. Uh, Rutherford really kicked the deadline off a little bit early with that big move with the Minnesota Wild, and he's fit in quite nicely. So even though they don't have, they don't have Jake Gensel, uh, who was a big-time performer in the playoffs on multiple occasions, uh, you know, former 40-goal scorer now, uh, Jake Gensel is going to be missed, but Zucker is filling in admirably so far. And if they can get everybody on board and healthy here, they're built for a playoff run as well. they got two guys in that can play with Murray and Jerry, and I think this team is going to have a strong finish to the regular season and be a force to be reckoned with here. Now in third place, I've got the New York Islanders. And the Islanders are another team that had a really solid deadline. I picked up Pajot from the Senators, who's going to be, uh, I think, really playing a good role down the stretch here. Uh, obviously, the Islanders are a team that's built for a strong defensive play with head coach Barry Trotz. I think he'll fit in quite nicely into their system. If you look at the schedules and the number of games that are left, I think we're going to see the Islanders come up and take that spot from the Flyers, who have the number three spot right now here as I record this video. But the Islanders, I think, are going to finish strong and come up and grab a top three spot. Now let's look at wildcard spots one and two here for the Eastern Conference. I have the two wildcard teams in the East, both coming out of the Metro, being the Philadelphia Flyers and the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, as I record this video, as I said, the Flyers are in the third spot in the Metro, but I see that faltering a bit here. Uh, they did add some extra depth at the deadline, but ultimately they are one of the teams who did the least. Uh, the other teams did more to continue to get better. We've seen the Penguins make moves recently. The Capitals have made an addition. Uh, the Islanders made some good additions. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes made some big-time additions. So they have a little bit more ground to make up. And then, of course, they only really added some bottom six depth as well. So personally, I like what the Flyers did. I don't think they needed to overreact, but obviously missing Nolan Patrick all year has been a big blow. Uh, and I do think that they're going to come down a little bit. But I think the Flyers have a you know relatively tough schedule down the stretch, and I can see them faltering a bit and falling from the three spot down to a wild card. And Carolina right now uh, is going to come up and grab that wild card spot. They're kind of right on the cups here. Uh, right now it's kind of a battle amongst them and Columbus. But I really like everything that Carolina did at the deadline. My only concern is in goal. Obviously that's going to come up and play a role here. If uh, a guy like Morazic is going to be out for any length of time, I think Reimer will be out for a little longer. But with Morazic, it's just hard to say. Their American Hockey League goaltenders hopefully will battle and play well for them down the stretch. But I do believe that they will get in here and have a strong finish to the regular season. So before we get into the Eastern Conference playoffs, we'll take a look at who I have making it on the Western side, and then we'll go round by one and tell you who I think is going to win. Now let's kick things off in the Western Conference with the Central Division. Now as I record this video, the Blues are in first place, but I don't have them staying there. I have the first place finish going to the upstart Colorado Avalanche. I think the Avs are going to finish really strong. Uh, I know that they didn't do a whole lot at the deadline. I was a little disappointed. I thought we'd see Saki make a big move, but I think that that big move for them was going to be Chris Kreider. He ended up staying with the Rangers, and a lot of the other deals that they could have made were already done with other teams, so it was a little too little too late. But this team is really built to win anyways. I mean, if you look at their uh, their top-heavy line with McKinnon, Rantanen, Landis Cog, I mean, they should all hopefully be healthy and ready to go for the playoffs. you got McCarr and Gerard and so on on the back end. I think this team is very exciting, and they're going to play really well down the stretch here and grab that division title from the defending champion St. Louis Blues. Now in second place, I do have the Blues finishing in second. Right now they're in first. I have them falling off here just a little bit. Uh, I think it's going to come right down to the wire. Now one thing I'll mention as well is the final game of the regular season for the Avalanche is, is against the Blues. So I do think that final game could very well determine who wins the division uh, considering how tight things are going to be. They're close now. I think the Avs are going to make it even closer down the stretch. I know a couple years back, it was down to the Avs and the Blues for the final spot in the playoffs on the final day of the regular season. And I think this schedule is lined up to do the same thing except have a different impact on the standings here. Instead of battling for a playoff spot, they're going to be battling for a division title. 
In third place, we have the Dallas Stars, who are pretty secure right now and I think should be okay to finish in third place. I don't think they'll catch St. Louis or Colorado, but uh, their goaltending has been solid all year with Hudobin and Bishop. Uh, they got some good defenders. If their forwards can continue scoring at a good pace here, they should have no problem uh, winning enough games to remain in third here down the stretch. Now let's jump over and take a look at the Pacific Division, which is a quite a log jam right now, and it really could be anybody's guess who's actually going to finish in the top three, but here's what I have. I have first place going to the young team, the Vancouver Canucks. I know uh, many people are predicting the Oilers or the Knights to win this division, but I think Vancouver's going to pull it off. If you take a look at their current schedule, they have uh, a little bit of an advantage here with more games played remaining, so they have some games in hand. Uh, they have a pretty good schedule to work with as well, and I think they can get enough points with what they have left to take the division lead. Clearly, they're hoping to get some help back on the on the forward group with hopefully having Brock Fesser back before the playoffs. But Tyler Toffoli's fitting quite nicely. You still got Quinn Hughes tearing it up for contending for the Rookie of the Year trophy. You get Pedersen's having a strong season again. So clearly this team is having a lot of success. They might be overachieving a bit, but honestly, I see them having a strong finish to the season and grabbing that division title. In second place, we've got the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, I really like what the Golden Knights have done here ahead of the deadline. They shored up their blue line by adding some guys like Alec Martinez. They grabbed themselves a heck of a goaltender, Robin Leonard. Leonard and Fleury might be the best one-two punch heading into the playoffs. It's certainly up for debate. If Flurry falters at all or gets hurt, which unfortunately has happened in the past, they have a guy like Leonard on standby who has been one of the best goaltenders in the past two seasons. A Vezina finalist last year, uh, strong numbers again. Uh, I really was surprised to see Chicago part ways, but uh, it was rumored that they were just too far apart on a contract. And it didn't look like he was going to end up remaining with the Hawks, so they might as well move him along to get back what they can for other future assets, which I guess was a good move, but I'm surprised they didn't push harder to sign him. But Chicago's loss is Vegas's gain in this case here. In third place, I've got the Edmonton Oilers. We're going to see Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl head to the playoffs. Hopefully the Oilers can get a lot of their injured players back ahead of the deadline. They have been battling a lot of adversity that way as well. Uh, but they did have some good deadline additions like Ennis and Athanasiu, who certainly played well in their opening games. Athanasiu did end up getting hurt afterwards, so I'm not sure what the longer-term prognosis is on him. But uh, the Oilers have been a team who have been battling all year. And I think if they can get everybody healthy uh, down the stretch here and play well enough, they should be able to hang on to third place. So now let's take a look at the Western Conference wildcard spot. We have wildcard one going to the Nashville Predators and wildcard team two going to the Calgary Flames. Now in this particular case, the Predators have some games in hand and I think even though they're having a subpar season, an inconsistent, somewhat disappointing season, I think they can get their act together here down the stretch. And I think really overall the team on paper release is just too good to continue to falter here. I think all that experience that they have and those uh, big time contracts, those players are going to pick up the pace here. They're, it's within an arm's reach to grab a playoff spot. And I can see them going ahead to do that. I do have the, I think it's based on their schedule and games in hand that they can take advantage of that to make that happen. Now the Flames are going to battle hard to stay in the playoff race here as well. Uh, they've been uh, somewhat inconsistent at times this year as well, but clearly the Calgary Flames last year's uh, top seed in the Western Conference uh, is certainly not having the year that they did last year, but the Flames will ultimately hang on and keep it together here to get into the Stanley Cup playoffs. So for the Western Conference, that means some teams who made some other, you know, pretty big moves are going to end up missing the playoffs like the Arizona Coyotes. I don't have them coming in. That tell you their Hall trade has not paid off. The team just can't score enough, and I just don't have the confidence that they can win enough games here down the stretch to get in. Same goes for the Winnipeg Jets. The team's battled so much adversity this year, but I just don't see them getting it done. Uh, they're just not quite the same team with all the losses that they've had off their roster. And Paul Maurice has done an admirable job, but ultimately, I think they're just going to fall just a little bit short. I know I was really hoping for a Battle of Alberta in the first round of the playoffs this year, but things are just not currently lining up for that to happen, even though I do have the Flames and Oilers both in the playoffs. So let's take a look at the first round of the playoffs set up here for the Eastern Conference. So that sets up the round one of the Eastern Conference as follows. That gives us a first round matchup of Boston versus Carolina, Tampa versus Toronto, the Capitals versus the Flyers, and the Penguins versus the Islanders. Now in these series, I do have the Boston Bruins defeating the Carolina Hurricanes in the first round. 
Uh, ultimately, the Bruins, I think, are just too strong uh, to have a first-round upset. I don't see that happening this year, but there always are some upsets, and we'll see if I'm wrong on that. But personally, that's how I have things going down. I do also have the Tampa Lightning defeating Toronto in the first round as well. Tampa is just too strong, and Toronto's been too inconsistent. As much as the Leafs are a really good hockey team, I'm not sure that they're completely built for playoff success here as of yet. I have too many concerns when it comes to the defensive structure, uh, not only on the blue line, but the uh, defense that the forwards can contribute as well. Uh, obviously, I think that's going to play a big role here, and we'll see if Freddie Anderson uh, can play some strong playoff hockey, but they need more than just that to get past the, the hot team of the Lightning, and I don't know if they can get it done here. So I'm taking Tampa to take out Toronto in round one. The Caps versus the Flyers, I'm going with Washington to win that series. As I said, the Capitals are just too big, too strong, too skilled. I just don't see them going out that early. Uh, obviously, if you look back a couple of years ago when they won the Cup, I think they're even a nastier team to play against now, and I think they'll get the job done versus the Flyers. Obviously, Pens and Islanders again. If We saw the Islanders take out Pittsburgh last year, but I think Pittsburgh will then get their revenge this year. The Islanders are going to be a strong team. It will give them a good go. I can see that maybe going six or seven games. But ultimately, I think the Penguins are going to come out on top here. I think they just have too much leadership, too much experience between Melkin and Crosby. You add guys like Patrick Marlowe and the other additions, like I mentioned here, you get a couple good goaltenders. Uh, and I just think that they're going to be too much of an offensive juggernaut to slow for the Islanders to slow down. And I think the Penguins are going to take that series probably in about six games. That gives us our four winners for the Eastern Conference of round one being Boston, Tampa, Washington, and Pittsburgh. Now, of course, that sets up the two second round matchups, which we'll take a quick look at here. Obviously, Boston would then play Tampa, and we'd have another round of OV versus Sid on the Washington Capitals battling the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, ultimately, I think the Tampa Lightning will defeat the Boston Bruins. Uh, Boston's had such a strong season, but I really think with all the additions at the deadline, that Tampa ultimately will be the stronger team, and it's going to be a hard fought series, but I do have the Lightning winning. In the other edition of the Caps versus the Penguins, I do see Washington once again beating Pittsburgh, ultimately ending the run here for the Penguins and ultimately ending Patrick Marlowe's run at a Stanley Cup. But I do think the Capitals are just too big, too strong, too skilled, and just too tough to play against that they will take out the Pens, which will certainly set us up for a round three Eastern Conference final matchup of the Lightning versus the Capitals. Now, this is going to be an epic series. Could go a long ways here. Could be a six or seven game series, I think. But ultimately, I do have the Lightning taking out the Capitals to go on and play for the Stanley Cup. So that is my Eastern Conference predictions. Obviously, those gives you all the teams making it all the way to the finals with the Lightning representing the East in the finals. Now, let's jump over and take a look at the Western Conference playoff matchups here for the first round. That would give us Colorado versus Calgary, St. Louis versus Dallas, Vancouver versus Nashville, and Vegas versus Edmonton. Now, a couple of these might be uh, surprising to you for what I'm going to give you for results here, but ultimately I do have the Avalanche defeating the Flames in round one. We saw how they went battled in last year's playoffs, and ultimately Colorado just exposed too many weaknesses on the Flames, and I think they're going to do it again. I think they will roll right through Calgary in four or five games. Also, the St. Louis Blues versus the Dallas Stars. I think the defending champion Blues are too strong and ultimately will come out ahead of the Dallas Stars. It could be a long, hard-fought matchup like it was last year because they did do battle uh, early in the 2019 playoffs as well. But the Blues will once again come out on top. Upset we're going to predict here is Nashville will defeat Vancouver. Even though Vancouver is going to have a strong regular season and take that uh, top spot in the Pacific, the Preds are going to do much better in the playoffs as a wildcard team than they have the last few years as a higher ranking seed. Obviously, the year they went to the finals, they were a wildcard team, and I think that they played with a lot less pressure and just seemed to have uh, much better results that way. Uh, and I think that's we're going to see that again. They're going to come in to the playoffs with nothing to lose, even though they might only just barely squeak in. Uh, they're going to come out and they're going to all that experience that they have is going to be enough to take out the young Canucks team who are still learning about playoffs, many of them getting their first taste of it in their young NHL careers. Now, in the Vegas versus Oilers matchup, the Vegas Golden Knights, unfortunately, are just too strong of a well-rounded team. I think they will ultimately take out the Edmonton Oilers in a long, hard-fought battle series and go on to win in the second round here. So that sets up our second round Western Conference matchups of being the Avs versus the Blues and the Preds versus the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, the defending Stanley Cup champions are not going to go down without a fight, but I think this year is going to be the year of the Avalanche. 
Winning back-to-back -back cups in this league is incredibly tough, and even though the Blues are going to give it a valiant effort, I think they're going to go down in round two, and the Colorado Avalanche are going to go on here to win. Ultimately, I think we're going to see another story like we did last year, with Jordan Bennington being a little bit of a Cinderella story in the playoffs. I think the Avalanche goaltending very well could provide a similar story this year and ultimately take down the defending champions. Uh, ultimately here, the Preds versus Vegas. We're going to go ahead and pick Vegas to win that. Obviously with the strong goaltending, the strong defense, and the uh, scoring that the way the Vegas Golden Knights are built, I just think that they're really built for a strong playoff run. And even though the Preds are going to come in on a high note, win a round, I think that's about as far as they're going to go. And we're going to see the Vegas Golden Knights do battle with the Colorado Avalanche in the Western Conference Finals. Now, that is going to be a very hard-fought series. Two different teams here that are built a little bit different, but both strong, excellent teams. At the end of the day, I am picking the Avalanche to take out the Golden Knights. I just think that uh, guys like McKinnon and Rantanen, this is going to be their breakout year, not only in the regular season, but in the playoffs. We've seen McKinnon and Rantanen, Landskog and company have couple of really back-to-back -back here strong regular seasons the past few years. And this is going to be the year that they make some noise in the playoffs and go all the way to the Stanley Cup Final. So that sets up our Stanley Cup Final of being the Lightning against the Avalanche. Now, this is going to be a very interesting, entertaining series. you got guys like Kucherov and Stamkos on one side, McKinnon, Rantanen, Landis Cog on the other. Both have excellent goaltending, some strong uh, blue liners, like guys like Makar and Gerrard, really getting a, more of the uh, national spotlight here, given the fact that they're so deep in the playoffs. But ultimately, I think the long-time experience and battles are going to pay off here, and the Tampa Bay Lightning are going to walk away being the 2020 Stanley Cup champion. Now, the Lightning were the team I picked at the beginning of the season. Uh, I was starting to think my prediction was really not going to be looking too good because uh, they didn't have a great start to the year. But the way they've played as of late with the additions they made at the deadline, I do have a lot of confidence here that they are finally going to get the job done and they're going to win the Stanley Cup with this group of players. Uh, the Lightning have been so close for quite a while now, but this will be the year that they can overcome that hump and win the Stanley Cup. So let me know what your predictions are. Who's getting in the playoffs? Who do you think is going to win the Stanley Cup? I'd be anxious to see your predictions down in the comments. So make sure you let me know your thoughts. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.